Hello and welcome back to Shine the Finance. Today's video is a continuation of uh, from the last video where I painted a weaver's bird's nest on this model background. Today I'm going to demonstrate how I painted this simple and easy background. It is commonly known as a model background. It is a very simple exercise, but the reason I made a separate video is that it's a very versatile background that you can uh, paint for a lot of different kinds of subjects and it works wonderfully uh, in oils, acrylics, pastels and every other kind of medium you can think about. And uh, also, it is a wonderful exercise for anybody who is a beginner and starting trying to learn blending with acrylics. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to paint a simple model background. Although I say it is very simple, and but it serves the dual purpose. First of all, it serves as a very suitable background for a variety of different subjects from wildlife to still life to portraits and uh, a lot of other things. And secondly, it is an excellent exercise for beginner painters in acrylics for learning how to blend acrylics. In this particular one, I have chosen some muted tones of greens and blues and browns as I am going to create a nature-based background for the weaver birds that I'm going to paint on it. But depending on the subject matter that you have, you can alter your color palette and choose your own range of colors. I started off by spraying the whole canvas and then wiping off the excess water with a rag. The idea is to have a damp surface without making the paint run down on the canvas surface. Next, I'm loading up a brush with tones of greens, yellow, and blue and applying in areas of different areas of the canvas. And at the very beginning, I'm applying the colors next to each other so that I can easily blend and keep blending and then progressing and not let the paint dry before I blend it into the adjacent paints. I recommend a filbert brush for uh, this particular project as that naturally helps in creating less amount of brush strokes and much easier blending. Next important thing to notice is that I'm using different, I'm sorry, I'm using a kind of uh, crisscross strokes while applying the paint, especially where one color touches the other. What it does is again helps to create a very smooth gradient and a very nice blending. Wherever I am leaving behind some visible brush strokes, I will come back with a mop brush, which actually is a makeup brush in my case, and get rid of those unwanted brush strokes. Always remember the mop brush has to be used with minimal pressure. Barely the tips of the brush should touch the damp surface. Just to use a few light strokes here and there, and that's it, you're done. And then wipe it off dry. If the mop brush gets wet, it will create more brush strokes instead of getting rid of brush strokes. So keep a few of those handy in case one gets too damp to continue to use. Also pay attention to the different colors that uh, you're using side by side and mixing or you end up having a muddy background, which I don't think is your uh, intention. But if in case you want to add a muddy background, go ahead and do it. In this case, I have used shades of green, blue, yellow, a little bit of white to brighten up the yellows, and also a little bit of brown. When I say brown, I always mean a raw umber or burnt umber or something of that sort. My goal was to create a blurry background that resembles like trees and foliage, and that prompted my choice of colors as well. I hope you will try out to create this beautiful background for your own paintings and in the process get a better hang of blending with acrylics. Thank you for watching. If you like it, do not forget to hit the like button. Also subscribe if you haven't already and stay in touch.